Hello everyone! Over the past few weeks, I've been teasing you with these interesting visuals. And what I want to do in this video is to show you how to do them because they are quite easy to achieve since they are just a posterization and pixelation effect applied on top of everything. Now, to get started, what I'm gonna do is to hide the previous effect that I applied and I'm gonna really quickly create a new Mesh Instance 3D and set it up so that we can use it to apply a shader on the whole screen. I have a full video on how to do that, but just quickly, we can simply create a quad mesh. And for this quad mesh, we make it two by two. Here, we flip the faces and we go to geometry and increase the extra call margins. And also we want to add a new shader material. And this shader material is going to be a new shader, maybe called overlay .gd shader. And I'm gonna click create. And if I now open this overlay shader, what I can do is to write position equals to vec4 of vertex dot xy 1.0 and 1.0. And this is pretty much setting the position of the quad to always be in front of the screen because it keeps the X and Y coordinate the same, but it sets the Z coordinate to be 1.0. Now we're also going to make this quad not be shaded. So render mode unshaded and also not be affected by fog. So fog disabled. All right, now the main thing we might want to do would be to somehow see what's behind this quad. And to do that, we are simply going to sample the screen texture. And to sample that, we just have to create a uniform sampler 2D and call it whatever we want. So screen texture. And we have to hint to Godot that this is a screen texture. So I'm just gonna write hint screen texture. With that, I can now sample this. So I can just write vec4 color equals to what? Well, to a texture from this screen texture that we have defined and from the UVs of the screen. So I'm just gonna write screen UV. All right, now our quad pretty much shows everything that's on the screen. Now, what we want to do is to take that everything and to pixelate it. And let's define maybe a pixel size that we want to have. So I'm just going to write uniform float pixel size and maybe hint range to, I don't know, something that's between 0 and 20. And let's make the step to be 1.0 because we don't want half pixels. Okay, now a good way of applying pixelation is by reducing the precision of the screen UV. And to do that, first of all, we need to know how large is our screen in order to find out how many pixels we have. Now, getting the texture size is actually quite easy because we can simply write vec2 text size equals to a vector2 of the function texture size obviously and we can take the screen texture from this and we can also write zero for the lod because we do not care about the level of detail of our texture now with this texture size as i said we have the pixel size we have the texture size so if we divide them we can get the amount of pixels that we have horizontally and vertically so i can write vec2 pixel count equals to what well to the texture size divided by this pixel size and finally, another thing that I can do is to reduce the resolution of my screen UV. So let's just write vec2 pixelated UV and make this equal to what? Well, first of all, let's increase the size of the UV. So I'm just going to take the screen UV multiplied by this pixel count. And then we want to reduce it again. So we divide it again by the pixel count. But you might say, OK, but this does nothing. And I perfectly agree. Right now, this does nothing. But if we increase the size of our screen UV and then we reduce its precision with the floor function, with this floor function, we are no longer going to have the continuous values screen UV used to have, but instead we are going to have step values. So we're going to have the value one, two, three, and so on until we reach the value of screen UV multiplied by pixel count. So if we now take the pixelated UV instead of the screen UV, You'll first see that, yeah, the screen is weird, but this is just because we have not applied any shader parameters. But if I change the pixel size from zero to one, two, three, four, or so on, you see that there is pixelation. Okay, but 
a weird thing that's happening here is that I get these very long pixels with lines between them. So what is that? Well, the problem is that here I am dividing the texture size by maybe an odd value. You see here, I have the 13 here. And of course I can't get an even amount of pixels because dividing by an odd value gives me something 0.5. So what I'm gonna do is to simply multiply this pixel size by two. And if I do that, you'll see that no matter what values I have, because this is an even number, the division happens correctly and I get the pixelation effect, which honestly looks absolutely amazing. Okay, but if we truly want to achieve a nice retro effect, we have to reduce the colors in our scene. Because right now it is pixelated, but we have so many colors. As you can see in the previous Mesh Instance 3D, I don't have that many colors and it settles the mood much better than this other one, which yeah looks kind of modern, but just lower resolution. So to do that, another effect that we are going to apply is posterization. And posterization basically means that we reduce the amount of colors that we have, similarly to how we reduce the amount of pixels that we have. So now, if I want to limit the number of colors to a certain amount, what I can do is to simply create a new uniform. Let's maybe call it uniform float levels. And let's also give it a hint range between zero and 100. And with these levels, what I'm going to do is to pick every color and decide on which basically level of color it lands so that it can get replaced with that level of color. Okay, but what do I mean by that? Well, similarly, we are going to use the floor function in order to compare some property of our color. And for example, let's just take the grayscale of the color. So I'm just going to write float grayscale and make it equal to what? Well, to the maximum of either color channel. I could use like some different version of grayscale, but this is perfectly fine like this. So color dot R or the maximum of color dot g and color dot b so what this is going to do is to pick the maximum between green and blue and finally the maximum between red and this other thing okay now with this grayscale i can find what's the closest grayscale to my floored levels so i'm just gonna write float lower and make it equal to floor of grayscale multiplied by levels and again divided by levels. Okay, but if you take a look at it now, you'll see that this lower level was obtained similarly to how we obtained our pixelated UV in order to reduce the resolution of our screen, but this time we just reduced the resolution of our color. Now, depending on our grayscale value, we have to decide if we want to lean in towards the lower color or if we want to lean towards the higher color in our color levels. So we also need to calculate the following color that's going to be uh, called maybe higher. And let's also change the floor to a ceiling so that we get the value right above the previous value that we calculated. And now by having that, we can check the grayscale and to see if it's closer to lower or higher. And we do that by simply making a float and let's maybe call it lower diff and let's make it the absolute value of lower minus grayscale. And also let's do pretty much the same thing, but let's get the higher diff and let's make it be the absolute value of higher minus grayscale. Now, depending on which of these values is smaller, we can select our level. So for example, I can write float level equals to what? Well, let's make a comparison. If the lower difference is smaller than the higher difference, then obviously we are going to pick the lower level. So I'm just going to pick lower and otherwise I'm going to pick the higher level. And now that we got the level, all we need to do is to find the adjustment that we need to apply to our color in order to get that posterization effect. And to find the adjustment, I'm going to create another float. I've created quite a lot of floats and let's finally call it adjustment. And this is going to be equal to the ratio between the level and the actual grayscale value. 
And with this ratio, we can now multiply our color.rgb. So color.rgb multiply equals to adjustment. And by multiplying it, you see here that it is black. But if I increase the number of levels, you see now that I'm getting some more colors. And yeah, a problem that I have is that there's quite a lot of black here. And this is the case just because we have to adjust the gamma or the luminance of our scene. And to do that, we can simply raise the color to a certain power before and after applying this effect. So a thing that I could do would be to maybe define it here, uniform vec2 gamma. And yeah, let's, let's just leave it like that. And I'm just going to use the x value before and the y value after. So before applying this whole posterization effect, I'm just going to write color.rgb equals to what? Power of color.rgb and this vec3 of gamma.x. All right. And sorry for the flashbang. Um, right after the adjustment, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time for the gamma point y. Okay, but I think it's best that we just visualize the gamma value. So if I change the x value, which is the value that I applied before doing the posterization, you'll see that it increases or decreases the difference between our levels or their boundaries to be more precise. And if I modify the y or the value after the adjustment has been applied, then you can see that it changes how light or dark each level is. So now what I can do is to maybe get some lower x value and to increase the y to some value that looks decent to me. And I can decrease these levels in order to give that retro aesthetic. And as you can see, this starts looking more and more like the initial scene that I had here. And maybe I can just increase the pixel size or decrease it to uh, one or something like that. And you can adjust it to stylize this however you want. And if I just save, I can just press F5 and I get this very, very interesting and retro feel to my whole scene by just modifying some sliders. And let me just show you a comparison to how it looks without the shader. And yeah, the game looks nice and the textures are fine. They are very high quality and nice to look at, but somehow I feel like it loses a bit of charm and maybe the lack of interesting visuals makes the game less identifiable among many other games that exist already on Steam on, or some other platforms. But yeah, I've been talking for quite a while, so this is pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot to my supporters, and see you in the next one. Bye bye!